Hi guys, welcome back to Spelling and Word Study. My name is Mrs. Rhodes and I'm here to get you started on Unit 15, the I-B-L-E ending. Please take a second to gather your materials. You will need your green book open to page 95. You will also need some colorful pens, markers, or crayons. Remember, whatever I mark on my board, you should be marking on your page. Please save room for a key as well. You'll notice that I already marked up my words using green vertical lines for my syllable breaks and orange check marks for my stressed syllables. Remember, those are the syllables that I say a little bit stronger and louder. If you would like to pause the video for a few minutes to mark up your word list, go ahead and do that. All right, so we have spent several weeks now talking about inflectional endings. Remember, those are suffixes that we add to a word to change its part of speech. So last week, we learned how to change a verb to an adjective by adding the suffix able, spelled A-B-L-E. So if something is manageable, it's able to be managed. If something's respectable, it's able to be respected. Well, this week we're learning a new inflectional ending, which is pronounced the same way. This also says able and has something to do with being able to do something. All of our words this week are adjectives. Um, so I want to start by reading the list of words with you. And then we'll go through and think about their meanings. All right, so please repeat after me. Compatible, convertible, distractible, divisible, eligible, feasible, illegible, impossible, incredible, indelible, indestructible, indivisible, infallible, inflexible, invincible, invisible, irresistible, irreversible, responsible, and reversible. So every word on this list is an adjective. They're all describing words and they all have something to do with able. So able to do something or not able to do something. You'll notice many of our words this week start with a prefix. Um, so let's mark those up first. Um, I wanna start with the prefix dis. Do you remember that one? Dis means away. So if you are distractible, then you are able to have your attention pulled away, right? So kids who are having a hard time focusing, they are distractible. If you're trying to sit at your table and get your work done, but you hear your friends playing outside, you are probably in a distractible mood. It will be easy to pull your attention away from your task, right? So dis can mean away. Then we have the prefix re. Remember that re can mean back. So if something's reversible, like a reversible shirt or a reversible blanket, you can go back and turn it the other way. So instead of looking at maybe the blue side of your comforter, you can flip it over and look at the flowered side. It is reversible. It can go back and forth. So re means back, dis means away, and then we have a whole bunch of words, um, prefixes that mean not. So we have ill. So if something's illegible, it's not able to be read. Okay, so if you scribble 
um, and you write in a really messy way, your handwriting might be illegible, not able to be read. So ill means not. Im also means not. So if something's impossible, it's not possible. It's not going to happen. If something is incredible, it's not able to be believed. It's not believable. Okay, you're like, wow, I can't believe that. That is incredible. If something is indelible, it's not able to be erased. So think about a black permanent marker. Don't let your three-year-old brother or sister get a hold of that because once they scribble on your clothes, that is indelible ink and it will leave an indelible mark. It will not be able, you will not be able to erase it. So ill means not, im means not, in means not, right? Those are all assimilated prefixes. Indestructible, not able to be destroyed. Indivisible, not able to be divided. Infallible, if somebody is infallible, they are perfect. They are not able to make a mistake. Now, we as humans are fallible. We make mistakes all the time. We get the wrong answer on a math problem. We say the wrong word. We, we just get confused, right? We are fallible, but there are um, characters in books or gods who are infallible, who cannot make mistakes. If someone is inflexible, they cannot bend, right? Um, so the opposite of flexible. If somebody is invincible, that means they're not able to be defeated. You can't conquer them, right? They are invincible. If somebody's invisible, they're not visible. You're not able to see them. IR also means not. So if someone is irresistible, you are not able to resist them, right? Like I find chocolate candy irresistible. I have to eat it. I can't say no. I find babies irresistible. I have to snuggle with them because they're so cute. If something is irreversible, you can't go back and change it. You can't reverse it. Okay. So look at all these different ways to say not. These are all prefixes. So over here, red box equals prefix. Okay, now here's the tricky part. If some adjectives end with able with an A and some adjectives end with able with an I, how do we know which ending to use? Well, you noticed last week that all of our able words, or most of them, with the A-B-L-E ending, came after a real word. Manage a bull, respect a bull, remark a bull. That happens sometimes here. So let's find those first. We have um, convert a bull. If something is convertible, it's able to be converted, right? So if you think about a convertible car, it's you're able to drive it with the top down or the top up. You can convert it depending on the weather. So if something's convertible, it's able to be changed, right? So yes, we can use it as a noun if we're talking about a convertible, which is a car, but other things can be convertible. They can be changed. Um, if someone's distractible, we talked about that, 
they're able to be distracted. If something's divisible, it's able to be divided, right? So 10 is divisible by 5. 10 is divisible by 2. It means you can divide it equally into sets of 5 or 2. Um, what else? Destruct. If something is indestructible, it's not able to be destructed. Remember, destruct is another word for destroy. Um, if something's indivisible, it's not able to be divided. If something's inflexible, it's not able to be flexed or bent, right? Um, if something's irresistible, you're not able to resist it, right? You're not able to stay away from it. If something is irreversible, you are not able to reverse it. You can't go back and change it. Um, if something is reversible, you are able to go back and change it. Um, I skipped this one, but I want to go back to it. If a person is responsible, they do the right thing, right? They do the mature thing. So um, a responsible kid will call her parents to say, you know what, I'm going to be late. Um, a responsible kid will make sure his little brother is safe. So a responsible person responds in an appropriate way. Right? So if you are responsible, you are able to respond in a mature, safe way. So all of these words change uh, a verb to an adjective by adding ibble. Okay, so just like last week, all of those words started as a real word and then we added able. Here, we take a real word and we add able. So I guess for these, you're just gonna have to memorize. Um, but if you come across um, a root that can't stand alone, for instance, elage, that's not a word, right? But if someone is eligible, that means they're able to participate, right? So you're not eligible to vote until you're 18. You're not eligible to get your license until you're 16, right? So once you're eligible, you're able to do something. But there's no um, word that means elige. There's no word that means fees. There's no verb, right? If something is feasible, it could happen. It's able to happen. It's not feasible for me to drive from Connecticut to California in one day. It's just not feasible. It's not possible. It is feasible for me to drive from Connecticut to Maryland in one day. That could be done. But fees can't stand alone. Elledge can't stand alone. Um, ledge can't stand alone. Pass can't stand alone. Cred can't stand alone. Dell can't stand alone. Whenever you have a chunk that can't stand by itself, you're going to want to use the ibble suffix, okay? If it's a word that can stand alone, there's a good chance it'll be an able suffix. I know this is super confusing. I think it's just going to come down to memorization, um, right? Uh, but maybe this will help you a little bit. If this chunk can't stand alone, use the I-B-L-E suffix. Um, same thing with foul, able, can't stand alone. Vince can't stand alone. Viz 
can't stand alone. Um, so in all those cases, we don't have a verb form. We have an adjective and we have a base that can't stand alone, okay? If you have a base that can't stand alone, you're probably going to want to use the I-B-L-E ending. If it can stand alone, it's going to be A-B-L-E or I-B-L-E. So good luck with that. Um, all right, one last thing. I do have a new Latin root for you. Remember last week we learned pend, and pend means to hang or weigh on something, like a pendant or a pendulum. Um, today we're talking about the roots flecked and flex. And anytime you see those, they have something to do with bending, okay? So for instance, your reflexes, right? When you go to the doctor's office for physical and she checks your reflexes, she's checking to see if your knee will bend when she bangs on it. Um, if you think about rays of light, they reflect um, off the mirror, so they're gonna bend. Your reflection is the light bending back. Um, if someone's flexible, they're able to bend either physically or mentally. Um, so there's other examples here, but go ahead and find the word and match it with its definition below. All right, that's all I have for you now. Lots of great words. Good luck, and I will see you next time.